Well, good evening to all of the advocates out there who are raising bloody you-know-what to stop John King. And I tell you what, uh, there are so many. Uh, I'm impressed with this uh, group of what I call the anti-common core moms. I realize that they're not all female, and I realize that they're not all uh, moms. But um, we have with us Kathleen Zebsda. Now, <laughs> always great to hear from somebody... There's something about you folks up in New York. Y'all are mad as hell. Oh, my goodness. Uh, are we ever. <laughs> and uh, now let me introduce Kathleen to you. She is the associate member of the New York's United, New Yorkers, rather, uh, United for Kids. And you can find that group's uh, Twitter page at, uh, at Cease Common Core. Kathleen, thanks for taking time out tonight with that. Hey, you've got a great camera. <laughs> That's the <laughs> highest resolution we've ever had here. Uh, Tell us what's got y'all so mad and so organized and, and um, what you going to do about it? Well, Common Core, as everyone knows, is, is an atrocious failure. Um, and John King came into New York, never having worked in a public school, sent his own children to Montessori schools where they'll never be educated by the Common Core standards that he so wonderfully supports for all of our, our children. Mm -hmm. um, they go to Montessori. Bill Gates' children go to the Lakeside School, which is a private school. Governor Cuomo pulled his children out of Common Core public schools and put them into private school. So it's great that they will educate their own children the way they decide to educate their children. But Common Core is good enough for all of us and all of our children. And children are suffering. It's, it's a um, one-size-fits-all cookie-cutter program that was established to have children all come out exactly the same. And it's it's damaging to children. The tests are onerous. They're every hour that's spent in test prep instead of giving them what they would normally have. It's uh, some schools are suffering with, you know, removing specials like art and music because they need to increase their test scores so that teachers don't aren't fired. Because New York has it attached to uh, the test scores go with teacher performance, and if the children don't toe the mark, then the teachers can be fired, regardless of tenure. So we have a lot here that started with John King, and when he left here, we said, hooray! Then we said, oh no, he's going to Washington, D.C. <laughs> no, no, no! Uh, that's a terrible thing. And now they want, uh, we knew that was going to happen, that they would want to have him go into the lead slot we don't want him there we do not want him there so one of the things that amazes me is the the point that you brought out uh you know with respect to john king uh but it amazes me uh in spite of his lack of experience in a public school in spite of the fact that he doesn't send his own children to a public school uh the advocates for common core in washington none of them were schooled by these standards how is it that so many people can be so stupid and duped into thinking something's good when, you know, some of these politicians, you know, I get to talk to their offices sometimes. And I say, you know, Congressman so-and-so did pretty well without Common Core. Why do we need it? Mm -hmm. and, Why do uh, we need it? <laughs> and, and I, you know, I'm all for free enterprise. I, well, if, if Common Core is a good thing, why don't they put up a website and sell their wares? And if anybody wants it, they can go to the website and order it. How's that? That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And they'd all be out of business. But the problem mm -hmm. is you have big corporate money behind it. Um, the publishing companies are making out hand over fist with the money. Um, Bill Gates is making more money than he's donating, believe me. Um, he's a businessman. He's not in it to, you know, out of the goodness of his heart, give all these kids Chromebooks. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> they then have to turn around and buy the software that goes with it. They have to update it every two years. They have to buy new ones when they crack. It's, it's yeah, he's very, very generous to make money. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what the bottom line is. Corporations are making a lot of money on the back of our children. Test companies are using our children as guinea pigs to find out whether or not this, as Bill Gates put it, we won't know for 10 years if this education stuff is actually going to work. Mm. Well, okay, fine, but I can't risk 10 years of my child's life or my grandchild's life 
to see if this might work. And then when they come out on the other end, they can't do any simple math in their head because they have to do it in their convoluted methods that yeah. are uh, being taught to them, which make no sense developmentally. So I would favor giving them abacus to do math before. Absolutely. I, you know, I really would. Um, let's let's talk about some of the things that are going on to push back against Common Core. You're in the middle of this fight. Your feet are on the ground. Uh, what are we doing and what can we do? Well, in New York, what we've been doing is county by county, asking each county legislation legislatures to pass a resolution, which is not a binding resolution, but at least it tells Albany, our government in Albany, that, that the local, local people are not happy with what's going on in the classrooms. So that was the first thing. We, we have probably about 13% now of, of the counties who have signed resolutions saying Common Core has got to be removed. The second thing that we're doing is we're looking at our senators and assemblymen in our, um, on our state level and saying, you passed an unconstitutional law that removed education from the local school districts to the federal government. You can't do that without having a discussion with the people who are, you're changing the Constitution for. So we want them to repeal that. And that's really where our efforts are going into now, is to have a full repeal on a state level. And each state can do it. Um, some states have already done it, and I didn't, don't have that information right in front of me right now. But there are states that have removed themselves from the Common Core. We started off at 45, and I think we're down to 40. So it can be done state by state, and that's where the power belongs. It belongs in the states, not in the federal government. And Wasn't that's really there, what... Uh, quite a movement, just individual parents and families just refusing to take the test. Well, there's two things that are going on. One is called opt-out, which is a mostly teacher-led effort to say, don't take the tests. And last year, well, two years ago in New York State, there were 20,000 people that said, we're not taking the test. Last year was 200,000. This year, we're looking at 600 plus um, and hopefully more that the parents are just saying no. And, you know, the, the federal government in the education, um, every, each, every Child Succeeds Act that was hailed by President Obama as being this major bipartisan effort that's going to change education and return it back to the control of the states. Actually, no. What it does is it ingrains them further and further into federal uh, standards and federal testing. And so... <laughs> well, let me ask some. Uh, you, you were there, and you yes, are there. Yes, uh, I am this, here. Yeah. It, it was very noticeable in the state of New York. Tremendous opt-out. Yep. Now, was this just a spontaneous, organic occurrence, or were you back there stirring up trouble? It started out as just parents saying, I'm not letting my child do this. It's abusive. To have them sit for three and a half hours and take a test that they have never... <laughs> for example, last uh, two years ago, on the fourth grade level, the reading level of the questions was on a seventh grade level. Not horrible because kids can you know you can give them harder things and they can go the problem is when you look at developmental um abilities of children they were giving them seventh grade comprehension questions and fourth graders cannot understand abstractions the way a seventh grader can so when you ask them to do that all they interpret is i don't understand this i must be stupid mm, yep and when you say, when a child says to themselves, I must be stupid, they shut down. They mm -hmm. start hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. They start, um, we had a lot of uh, parents calling saying, my child is abusing themselves. They're, they're starting to cut. They're um, banging their head on a table. They say, I'm not sick. They don't want to go to school. They, they're call telling them, I can't go to school anymore. I want to be homesick today. Mm -hmm. And the parents were saying, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And we had once, uh, therapist from Long Island who went on national, um, you know, television, she went in front of Congress and she was saying, children are actually cutting themselves, poking themselves with pencils, stabbing themselves, writing no good on the, on the wrists of their hands with the pen because they, they 
just cannot do the work that's being put in front of them. Um, and then you, you add on top of that the hours and hours and hours that are spent in prepping for the tests. Um, we're, we're not educating our children anymore. We're teaching them to be automatons, how to take a test, answer only the questions the way that we taught them to answer them. And, uh, and then when it comes back, all you get back from the state is they scored a one, they scored a two, they scored mm. a three, they scored a four. Yeah. You don't know where their strengths and weaknesses are or how to fix anything that might be wrong. Kathleen, here's a question. I'm very serious. Mm -hmm. We lost in the re reauthorization of the No Child Left Behind Act. That's right. Obviously, you're still engaged. Obviously, your organization is still engaged. What would you say to the people that, that would say, it's over, we lost? No child, <laughs> like they said, no child left behind. No child can be abused, ever. And if, if all we save is one child, we've saved one. Um, no, no parent can let this happen to them. Um, I, I tell my daughter every day, you're sending a five-year-old into kindergarten. If she comes home from school the first day and that twinkle is out of her eye, mm. homeschool her. <laughs> we can't allow this to happen. They do not own our children. Uh, Hillary Clinton even said, education is um, a non-family enterprise. <laughs> well, well, what would she know about family? Exactly. Well, you know, it takes a village. It takes a, uh, now it takes yeah. a federal government. Yeah. Um, but no, children are the, the, um, the responsibility of the parents, not of the state, not of the federal government. And it's really up to us to, to draw the line and say, absolutely not, no more. Kathleen, I wasn't trying to tee up the question, but that is the exact answer I wanted to hear. I am so proud of you. I am well, so proud you. of your organization. I am so proud of the good people of New York. Uh, I mean, you guys are fighters. And um, I don't have m that many good things to say about <laughs> the state of New York. <laughs> so coming from this Southern gentleman, I really got a lot of respect for you all. And I hope that you keep up the fight. And I'm just honored uh, to fight alongside with you. And thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. And we look forward to uh, waging battle for as thank long as it takes. Thank you, Mark. And you keep up your good work. It's amazing. Thank Very you so much, Kathleen. Thank you for including us. All righty.